Hi everybody, I'm Rob and this is Gosshawk. Gosshawk is our 43 foot uh, Mauritius catch. Uh, we've lived on her for a couple of years now, uh, owned her for a year before that. Uh, we're doing a major refit uh, this year. Um, we're doing bottom work, uh, doing some work on the engine mounts, rewiring the mast, uh, painting the hull. Anyways, the reason I'm doing the video today is uh, is part of the the inspection part. Like we've had uh, we've had Gosshawk out for a week now, so we've uh, got a bit better handle on what our what's, what our uh, job list is. Uh, today I took part the coupling on the prop shaft and uh, took a look at it. I think I can. Move I can save it. I'm, I've got a call in to a friend who's a uh, millwright who's going to come in and take a look at her and uh, see if uh, my solutions for the engine uh, problem or, or uh, alignment problem is uh, something that can help me with. I suspect we're going to have to weld the motor mounts at some point. But, anyways, not to worry about that today. Today, um, what I'm going to be talking about is the sacrificial anodes on anodes. Sacrificial anodes on Gosshawk. Um, anodes are interesting. If you're not familiar with the way that sacrificial anodes go on a boat, uh, it depends on the type of water you're in. It depends on how much wetted surface of steel or stainless or whatever that you've got in the water. Um, who's going to dictate how much and of what kind of uh, sacrificial animal you can use. If you're in salt water, uh, zinc. Zinc is pretty much it. Uh, that's uh, actually you can use this catch-all phrase. People say they're going to change their zincs. Whether or not there's zinc in fresh water, we don't use zinc. Zinc doesn't do anything for us. So if you're going to spend, come out of the out of the ocean and spend time in the Great Lakes, uh, more than you know couple of months or so, if, you, if it's something you're going to take on for a year or two, uh, definitely change those zincs out and put on either aluminum or magnesium. Uh, now, aluminum are supposedly a more of a catch-all, so in the St. Lawrence where, or just outside the St. Lawrence where you're into a mix of salt and fresh, you're good. Uh, if you're in freshwater, aluminum is good, as long as the water isn't pristine. Uh, if you're going to spend time up at Lake Superior or some of the interior lakes, something that's really off the beaten path, uh, then the way to go is magnesium. Uh, general, the general rule that people have been using for years is magnesium in fresh water. And uh, after doing some research and looking what I needed for a goshawk, uh, number one, I couldn't find a big enough magnesium anodes uh, for her. So I was looking for an alternative. And because we're in marinas on the Great Lakes, in Lake Ontario, uh, after doing some research, I found out that our optimum was aluminum. Now, there, is cal there are calculators online that uh, you generally don't have to worry about unless you're working with a steel boat. Um, because uh, if it's on your motor, your motor will have some ones that uh, sacrificial anodes that are already si uh, sized for the boat. If you've got uh, a prop shaft with a prop gun on the end, the size of the nut's going to dictate how big these anodes can get. Uh, when you're working with a steel boat, though, you've got to be concerned about any or any steel that's in the water. And there's a lot of steel in the water here. And um, after looking at the calculator, I saw, well, when we bought the boat, there was only a small couple of uh, sacrificial anodes on the boat. It was on the keel, uh, or sorry, on the rudder, and a couple on the front of the keel, maybe all together added up to maybe four pounds. Uh, after doing the, taking, checking the calculator, um, and doing the calculation three or four different times with two different calculators, because I didn't believe it, um, I ended up coming up with anywhere, the calculation came up with anywhere between 18 and 22 pounds of sacrificial animal. So, if
if you saw the last video when we hauled out, I may have pointed out, or you may have noticed a rectangular white blotch as a fly. Yeah, you see fly on the hull. This is the, what we had on here. These are the Diver's Dream uh, Anos. I've had six of these on that boat, as well as the prop nut, as well as uh, on the rudder, just these ones I found uh, in the local marina shop uh, that are actually for a power boat. So I figured uh, put that just on the rudder itself, so at least there's something on that, uh, the rudder that's kind of isolated from everything else. So, uh, but if you look here, I don't know how well you're going to see this, but you can see that this has actually deteriorated quite a bit. And I'm happy to see this because if these were pristine, then it means I didn't do it properly. Uh, you've got to make sure that the, uh, the aluminum on the anodes in contact with the steel of the boat. So I actually sanded down after, after uh, painting the bottom. I sanded the spots where these anodes were going to go and bolted them down as tight as I could. And um, they've done their job. Uh, this is one that I haven't cleaned up yet. I've cleaned up all the rest of them, but uh, you'll notice there's actually a powdery, chalky substance on theirs. And I think this is just the uh, aluminum oxide. So, uh, aluminum oxide, basically. And you can see that it's actually chewed away quite a bit at the actual uh, anode. I haven't weighed these up yet, but I suspect they've probably lost between 5 and 10 percent of the metal of these which is good for the reason, I, like I said, at least I know they're working and there's enough meat here that I think I'm good for at least another three or four years, uh, which is really nice considering that uh, I think it cost me close to between three and four hundred dollars for enough sacrificial animal to put on this boat. So uh, it's nice to know that I'm going to have to at least replace these. This I will, um, but not the big uh, plates anyway. And then you'll actually notice I had a problem at that too. And this one, it was actually all smooth, so you can kind of see how it was. I've cleaned this one up. Uh, it's all smooth, but the pitting is actually quite deep, but there's a lot there still. There's, that's probably less than 5% uh, off of that. But again, it's doing something, so I'm really happy. Uh, so these are going to get cleaned up. After we paint the bottom, I'll sand down again where these all go uh, to make sure i got a good electrical contact and put them all back on. I think we're good for another four years, hopefully. And by that time, I'll do a haul out. And if the bottom needs it, I'll do bottom paint. And hopefully all the help is replace these anodes. And we'll be back in the water, which is gonna be nice because this year is gonna suck. Uh, I suspect we'll be out of the water for six to eight weeks and we're living aboard. So we're going out. There's the front hall. This is the ladder that we have to go up with all of our groceries and uh, uh, going to work and coming back and up and down. And of course, you always forget the tool that you need down here, up there, or vice versa. So uh, we're going to be in better shape by the end of the season. But uh, hopefully, we will get a lot more done over the next little bit. And I'll do a lot more of these videos as things come along. I said we've got a lot of jobs, so um, please stay tuned and we'll see you the next time.